day. It is uh, Tuesday morning. I'm almost losing count of the days nowadays, but uh, we are live. Just came in from a staff meeting. We were not virtual, but Kevin had arranged the choir room, and we were way far apart from one another and got to yell at each other uh, while we made our comments. Uh, so the staff is continuing to work from home and do other things uh, during this fluid situation. We will do a stripped-down version of the Beacon uh, this month because we do feel like that there's those out there who do not uh, have Facebook or let's see the e-notes that need to hear from the church. So your staff uh, continues to work as safely and as we can with the limits put upon us. Uh, maintenance crew, great group, uh, and uh, they've started doing potholes in the parking lot. Good time to do that when no one's in the parking lot. And let me tell you, that is their choice uh, to work during these days. So thank the staff for stepping up. Now, I, I know that you're tired. I know it's reached the point where you're weary. Uh, your anxiety level is probably high. Uh, the word stir crazy has taken new meaning for me. I, I, I mean, I really understand it. Um, pray for me. Pray that my marriage survives my stir craziness. Uh, I purposely did not uh, watch television to about 4.30 on Saturday. And uh, I, I'm able to get out and ride around and do things. I'm still coming to the church and working. But Sunday was a difficult day. Uh, for me and all of us, thank God for the worship of our church and other churches. But uh, I think I became stir crazy uh, with not being with you. So all those words go around, tired, weary, anxious. Uh, here in the South, we call it bone weary. Now, I have an antidote for the tiredness and the weariness and the stir crazy of these days. It's right here. It's the Bible. It's the Word of God. Someone texted me and said, what are you reading? And I text them back the Bible and I hope that they knew I was serious. Um, I've read many books of the Bible trying to get direction uh, during these days. Uh, we lead in faith, not fear. We feed our faith, not our fears. You've heard that. And we feed our faith through the Bible, God's word. God's word is the antidote. God's word is is a lamp unto our feet. God's word is a light unto our path. God's word gives us what we need for times like these. Someone has said this recently. I heard this a long time ago. My dad used to say this in difficult times. The Bible was written for times like this. The Bible was written for times and days like this. The Bible is the authority in our life and all our life but especially in times like this. Study the Old Testament. The Old Testament is full of, of, of the, the trials and tribulations of the people of God trying to be who they could be despite the problems they had. How about the Exodus? They, they wandered in the desert for many years, and then the Babylonian captivity, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. They were captives in a foreign land, but, but through all their struggles, it's there in the Old Testament, through all their struggles, God always was with them and God always delivered them. The Old Testament is about the struggles of the people of faith. Jesus came into a world of darkness. The people who sat in darkness, the Bible says, has seen a great light. Jesus came into the darkness of the world to deliver the world from darkness. The Gospels talk about the struggles of people, how Jesus worked with them, healed them, told them how their lives would be better. The book of Acts talks about the struggles of the early church. And, and Paul's letters talked about the struggles of people in their lives at uh, Corinth and Philippi and Colossia and other people. The Bible was written for times like these. Study the, the, the words of the Bible. Study the Psalms. The Psalms give you great lessons, uh, and it tells you about the steadfast love that will last forever. 
study the Bible, hear the words of Jesus when Jesus said, come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Turn to the Bible, the antidote, uh, the encouragement, the comfort, what we need to lead us through these days. I believe the people of faith is going to lead us through these days by putting our trust in God and we find our direction for that in God's word. Now, I don't want to be long today. I got long-winded yesterday, and I could be long-winded today when I'm talking about the Bible. I'm talking about the Bible. But I'm going to end today, and I want to read a portion of Scripture from, to you that comes from Isaiah 40. Now, the first 39 verses of Isaiah, that Isaiah talks about the tribulations of people, the warning of captivity, and the hardship of captivity. But beginning with the 39th and 40th verse, the book of Isaiah turns to God leading the people through captivity into freedom and helping the people rebuild the temple of God and rebuild their faith and rebuild their nation. And at the beginning of that in Isaiah 40, Isaiah has these words for them and these words for us this day. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord God is an everlasting God, the creator even to the ends of the earth. He does not faint. He not, does not grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and he strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Hear that again. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Be safe. Put your trust in God. Walk in faith, not fear. Do the things you need to do this day to love one another and lean on the word of God. God bless you. Uh, Pastor Mark will be sharing with you tomorrow and I'll be sharing again Thursday. I love you. I pray for you. Please pray for one another. Thank you.